had a good enough uh, comeback after a disappointing finish the last week? I, I don't know. I guess we'll see where we end up. Yeah, it was a you know decent lap and uh, not quite exactly what I was looking for, but obviously um, you know be a good starting spot. So that's important here. Have you gone back and watched the last research from last week's race? And if so, has your opinion changed or is it the same? About what? About the restart and whether Denny jumped it. My opinion's the same. So what do you do? Uh, do you do you feel like you know what the rule is? Or no. Do you, no. I don't think anyone does at this point. So we did. So how do you uh, approach it going forward? <clears throat> uh, I guess if you try to jump, don't be surprised if they penalize you. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I don't really understand. It's a it's a black and white rule. You go in the you get to the box and you go. Um, I don't really understand what all the questions are about. You go before it, you should get penalized. So in other sports, sometimes in other sports, sometimes uh, referees let's say swallow the whistle and allow the, the athletes to determine it themselves. Should there and, the, and there are rules written in that what, this is what this is what and, and sometimes that's let go. Is there ever a time where it's okay to swallow the whistle in this sport to let the athletes, let you guys decide it, or was that too agree? To I you? don't really think it's a good comparison. I mean, okay. I think it, it's clear as day. It, it's not a question. You go before the line, it's a penalty. Um, there's ways you can't. There's no data in a football player to know. You know, some things are questionable. There's, there's, you know, ball and strike calls. But this is that case is not. It's a black and white. It's a, you can or you can't call. So I don't really understand what the debate is all about. So are you bitter still over last week or are you over? No, it's water under the bridge. I mean, it's, it's a race. It's over. It's, I was frustrated. Um, it's a aggravating to, you know, lead an entire race, dominate a race, and then have it, you know, go away that way because, you know, I think that's like the fifth or sixth time it's happened to Richmond. So, you know, you just get aggravated, and it just it all piles on in a, in a short amount of time, you know, in just 10 or 15 minutes. And, you know, I clearly lost my cool and did some things I'm probably not proud of. But, um, you know, you move on, you go to next week, and you hope you can, uh, you know, come out on top and do a better job. Any conversations with NASCAR about how they reached their dis a non-decision, if you will? Uh, no, I mean, I, I don't really – I've seen what was said. I read what they said, and I heard what Elton Sawyer said, that, you know, if it happened with – 50 to go or 100 to go or 300 to go, they may have called it. So it's it's clear as mud. <laughs> so does there need to be, like, some people say, put timing lines there so you know where somebody... Timing lines? Yeah. Put timing there line is lines. There. There's lines. The restart box has a line in the front, a line, no, line like in the back. No, but a timing line that gives them, like, uh, immediate, like, okay, we know this guy went five miles per hour faster in the than the pace car speed. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, is it so are we going to if it's going to be that way, just say green white check, you can go whenever you want. And then we'll have we'll do what we want to do. And then obviously the leader's going to go wherever he wants. So um yeah, I just it's it's hard to follow the rules and then somebody breaks the rule and doesn't get in trouble for it. It's it's ridiculous. Can you explain the Larson aspect of that last lap? Uh, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> I mean, he slid up into me, and I mean, barely, barely got me in the side and wanted two, and I just, my, the, the lid popped off. <laughs> Denny said that you two talked. What was that? Yeah, it was, it's fine. He didn't do anything wrong. I just, yeah, like I said, it all just piled on really quickly, and I lost my cool. It happens. Was it aggravating, the, the pick crew situation? Those, those guys used to work with you, and now you have a new group, and... and just kind of on the money stop. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it hurts. It's frustrating. Um, they're working their guts out, trying to fix it, trying to get better. Um, it's not an overnight process. So, you know, unfortunately, it, um, you know, it, it cost us a race last weekend. And hopefully, you know, fingers crossed going forward, we can get past that and, and do what we need to do. We're going to be in position to win a lot more races, but... That's tough when you give them away. They never come back. You know, you never get them back. So it's uh, it's always frustrating. You've had such a good start to this season, leading the points at or near the top of every statistical category. Have the wins become so important in this game that if you don't have at least one in the win column, you kind of tend to overlook all the other great things that you've done? I mean, it's a balance, right? You want to be, you don't want to be win a race and then have a couple bad weeks. You want to balance out that consistency, but you got to add wins in there. So, 
yeah, I mean, you, this deal is all about bonus points for the playoffs, and they're critical, you know. So, obviously, 15 for winning the points is a big deal, but you got to have wins on top of that as well. So, hopefully we can, yeah, I mean, listen, I feel like we've had top three to five cars every single race this year, and we're going to win some races. It's just um, it's frustrating when you dominate and they get away. But um, not losing sight of the big picture where we feel really good about our team and where we're at. and. Um, you know, we want to keep racking up, you know, top fives if we can and, um, and some stage wins as well. You've never been a... Hey, it comes a short track like this, the rules package change is a bigger change than, than the, the fact that we're racing the Dark Horse Mustang now, so... Yeah. How different do you think the new short track package is? It's a fair amount different. Um, in some ways, uh, you know, it seems like it's a little freer into the corners for sure. Um, seems like dirty air isn't quite as bad, uh, which, I mean, it still will be, right? It's dirty years, dirty year, right? you're behind a car what's going to happen, but it seems to be a little better. Thank you. So, Joey, I know, like, you experienced your own you know, crew chief swaps, which obviously Austin dealt with her again this week. I was curious, how much does that relationship with the crew chief matter to success? Because I know it's not a matter of, you know, intellect or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, that, it's it's pretty important. Um, you know, it probably depends on, on the team. Uh, you know, some teams that, that the crew chief is – does all the jobs, um, right? He's included in everything. There's some teams that have a very, you know, well-rounded team that, that everybody's kind of really good at their position. Uh, it probably just depends, um, you know, and how well the driver and the crew chief get along as far as the communication and the openness and um, understanding where everybody's at. Um, you know, the experience level comes into that. It's getting that chemistry put together is not the easiest thing in the world to do, to get, um, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a relationship just like any other one, right? When you, it's, it's hard, though, because you don't know what you got until you work together, right? I mean, most of the time you go on a date with a girl a few times before you before you marry her, right? And uh, in, in this case, you go on a couple job interviews and you go to work and you hope it works and you don't really know until you start working together. How long did it take you guys back in 2020? Yeah. Like when the uh, it was a little harder because it was beginning of COVID. Um, but I feel like we, it took a few, not only because it was a crew chief swap, but it was a whole team swap. So it was for everybody different. So that was a little harder because of that. Yeah. So what was it, what was it like to hear from NASCAR this week saying that if the restart had been earlier, that they might have reacted as somebody who was, you know, could have benefited from something else? I am close to the fire. Um, I mean, I spoke on this on Sirius on uh, Tuesday there, but um, you know, consistency is what you look for. And I don't believe a call should be different at the end of the race versus middle of the race. I also believe there's more time at the end of the race than there is during the race, uh, in my opinion. Um, I'm not up there in the booth to actually know exactly how all that goes, but I would assume after a race there's more time to talk about things before you declare the winner um, than it is during the race. But either way, I think we're just looking for consistency. That's the, that's the thing that everybody looks for. Is it just needs to be the same week to week, lap to lap. Is it, um, why is it an important sense of consistency as opposed to seeing maybe in other sports and seeing it also in the sport, letting the athletes let it play out a little bit more for the athletes and let, and let them have a little bit more of the determination maybe next time you benefit I don't have a really big urge it's not like I'm a healthy guy like I eat chicken tenders pretty much every meal so yeah it's not a health thing it's just I don't know just, I haven't really had the urge to try one how does uh, how does the little man feel about becoming a big brother I think he's excited I think he like he's at the age where like he kind of gets it but kind of doesn't at the same time but like, so far he's all about it more days than others I think it'll be a real reality check here a couple months surprised to see two instead of one yeah there doctor. there's not much in life honestly that compares to the doctor being like oh congrats there's two like there's like that there's very few things i feel like that compare in life to that so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a big just change in our household but um i'm excited it is scary though at the same time for sure yeah thank you chase the rumors came out this week about shr possibly selling charters is there as a driver, do you kind of just have to ignore that and just focus on the car, the team, and the races? Yeah, I mean, like, there's always rumors, right? Like, whether it's the driver, the team, or anything. So, I mean, for us, you know, I would say, 
even with it all coming out this week, our biggest focus has been just this weekend. Like, this is a place that we know that we can go and win. And regardless of what happens, if you're winning races and running up front, you're going to be able to find a job. So, I mean, I, it, I'd be lying if any time the rumor comes out, you're not a little concerned, right? But, I mean, it's so far away, I feel like, from anything, anybody knowing anything that's even happening. So, yeah, I try to just do my best every week. And if I'm winning, whether stuff stays or sells or whatever, like, I – that's so above me. I just try to go out there and do my job every week. Capture memories with Pawfolio, the ultimate digital pet card experience. Customize, download, and share in 3D magic. Celebrate the joy, milestones, and memories with frames that bring your pet's world to life. Pawfolio, where love thrives in pixels. Explore now at pawfolio.com because every pet deserves a spotlight. This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number 21. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, check out one of these two videos beside me. Visit funstretch.com for more racing content.